what incredible weather we are having. We have a light frost in the morning right now and then it gets up to 60, 65 degrees. It is perfect fall weather. And right after fall weather, we get that early winter and that's when traditionally butchering happens on a homestead like this. And when you butcher, you gotta be able to take care of that meat. Smoking is one of the ways to do that and I wanna build a smokehouse for the homestead so we can start to experiment with that. So the next project that we wanna build right now is a smokehouse. We've been procuring the uh, lumber for that and we've been working on the plans for it. We've been thinking about this project for almost a year and it's really coming together on paper. It looks incredible. Uh, we're gonna be using a construction technique that is definitely a couple levels more sophisticated than a simple log structure like we've done with the cabin here. Something that's a lot more sturdy, but it's gonna take some more time and, and definitely some more technical finesse. Every building like this starts with the foundation in the very bottom of the building. So here we've got four foundation stones. These are nice flat stones that we're gonna set into the ground here and get them nice and level. Now on top of these stones are gonna go our sill boards, I guess we'll call them. They're not really logs, but nice four by four chunks of lumber. And these get a lap joint and then a square mortise so that we can set the corner posts into them. And boy, this is gonna be sturdy when it's done. Every structure that we have done so far on the homestead has been rugged, rough, straight out of the wilderness. But another sort of construction in the 18th century was a lot more refined and a lot more intricate, and that's what we're doing with our smokehouse. We're going to give an example of a timber frame, which has a lot of posts and beams and cross pieces all mortised together, little tenons and mortise, and that goes with the pin that holds it all together. This is a very, very common construction method in the 18th century, all the way up until even the 20th century. The designs for this structure, I've pulled through a lot of books and a lot of research on uh, historically correct homes. And another really good uh, reference point is here in Northern Indiana, we still have a lot of old barns that are still standing. These barns were built with the same techniques, the same processes. So it's really easy to go in there, look at the mortises, see how they were built, see how they were pinned together, and get a good first-hand idea of what we're doing here. Now I have gone through and made all the plans, kind of a blueprint here, 
with all my different dimensions and all the angles that I need for all the pieces. Building a structure like this, it's very important that you have a plan. You have to have everything thought out and measured out before you even start cutting anything. Our smokehouse structure is going to be eight foot square by eight foot tall, which puts the peak at about 12 feet tall. It's a 45 degree angle. So we have our foundation stones laid and we have the sill plates, the bottom pieces of the structure laid out. They have a half lap joint on each one and then a square hole through all of it. So these posts, they have a long square tenon on them. So when we actually set this structure up, that tenon is gonna go through each corner and it'll lock that corner together. All these pieces in a timber frame structure, they all lock together. Our front and back are the two main pieces. So we call these a bent. So it comprises of two posts and then the connecting pieces, which are called girts, and those will pin together, and then they'll have two knee braces. And it's a 45 degree angle piece that's mortised in on either side. What that does is that keeps the bent, the timbers of that first section from going back and forth. It'll keep it solid. This is our front elevation, the front diagram showing where the door and all the different pieces are. Then we have the rear and then the sides. Now all these pieces go together and they all fit together in the post. And the posts are the very, very intricate parts. So here I have a diagram showing all four posts and where the mortises need to be on each one. When you're making these, any mistake can ruin the piece and you have to start over because each joint has to be snug and tight. And if it's off just a little bit, it won't line up and you gotta start over. This piece is a corner post for our smokehouse. This is one of the most complex things that we've done so far on the homestead. And it is just one piece of this whole structure. Now this has all the mortises in it. And the mortise is the pockets. That tenon will fit in right like that. And we'll bore a hole through and we'll use a pin to pin it together. When we're making these mortises and these tenons, they have to fit snug. They can't fit loose, you can't have a whole lot of play. And each one has to be made for each mortise. So each tenon, that tenon goes to that mortise. And the reason why you want to make each one separate and to fit each other is because these are hand cut beams. They're not perfectly straight, they're not perfectly square. These pieces are a lot of work. They take a lot of time, patience, and a lot of attention to detail.
all that work, weeks and weeks worth of work, making all the mortises and the tenons and all the holes so that everything can get lined up just right. And we finally have the main part of the structure put up. A little bit of touch up here and there. We gotta make sure the angles are just right. But we got it. Now the next step is the rafters, the trusses, that will actually make the roof. And we wanted to make it as easy as possible, so we went with a 45 degree angle, which would be a 12-12 pitch. What that means is 12 inches over and 12 inches up, and that gives us a 45 degree angle. And that makes all of our mortises and tenons and all the angles really easy. Now, we make our rafters and our trusses, and they'll go together, and they will look something like our level here. We'll have the, the rafters and then the collar tie, and then this makes the truss. Now we have that, well, how does it sit there? Well, our top plates have a little notch in it. And then the bottom of the rafters have a little tenon. We call this a bird's mouth. And the bird's mouth has a little tenon here, and that will sit really nicely right into that top plate. And what that does is it not only keeps it side to side, but it'll keep it front to back. So it'll lock that in place. Then the only thing we need to add is a strut, another 45 degree angle piece here and there to keep them upright. And then that'll make a nice solid roof. All we have to do is put the sheeting on it and then we're onto the siding.
We're finally done. Brandon, how does it feel? It, it feels really good. It's been a long haul, long project, you know, a lot of, lot of hours put into it, but it was fun. So fun just being able to go from making the blueprints and then having the raw materials and making all the mortise and tenons all the right length and in the right place to make it all fit together. It was really, really cool. Yeah, we went from, well, every tree was, was cut um, here off this property or off my parents' property. Every board here was from those trees. They were cut individually. Every board sawn out of those trees one by one. Every shingle was split right here. Um, the hinges were forged here. The, you know, the hasp was forged here. And watching this come together, uh, seeing the plans, and then they actually worked out. Just pretty incredible, uh, you know, all the angles, all the cuts. Uh, I'm amazed by the project, but it was a long project. It seems, I mean, you look at this from, from the outside and it's small. It's just like, well, it's like just a little, little tiny shed. It only take a weekend, right? Oh, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. A lot of energy, but it's a completely different kind of project than we've done before. This post and beam um, and, you know, out of boards instead of logs, a major, major project and it'll be a major addition to the homestead here. Next, we're gonna get a fire going in here and Ryan's gonna hang up some meat and we're gonna talk about using the smokehouse. Thank you, Brandon. You've done an incredible job. Thank I know you. it's been one major <laughs> pain, but thank you so much. And I wanna thank everyone out there for watching today. Have a great day.